right, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so my name is Matthias Krug, and uh, I'm going to present about uh, Alma Linux support in, sorry, S form support in Alma Linux. And um, so first of all, a little bit about myself. Uh, so yeah, this is me, and um, I, so I come from uh, embedded, uh, I have an embedded background, kernel development, and uh, in 2020, I joined uh, CyberTrust. And uh, at first I was working in the Alma Linux, uh, Miracle Linux team. And uh, since uh, my company joined Alma Linux Foundation in, uh, well, this year, in early this year, and ever since then I've been working on uh, Alma Linux and uh, in particular on s -form support. And so I think there are probably no German speakers here. So, um, so like in my free time, I also do work on, well, some open source projects, but also like I used to write some like on shell scripting. So if, if you read German, maybe you can read some of my articles. That would be nice. Uh, I used to work for, uh, write for this Linux magazine. Anyways, um, so yeah, so the, the what I'm gonna talk about today and like what you're probably hopefully remember at the end of this talk is first of all, um, like how S-bombs are generated in Alma Linux and why we generate uh, S bombs in Alma Linux, and um, uh, second is what uh, so the contents of our S bombs in Alma Linux. So what uh, like what information is in, in our S bombs, and at the same time I also want to talk about uh, the information that we could put into our S bombs that we don't put into them right now, and uh, how we're going to address that. And yeah, so um, like at the end of the talk, you will have an idea where uh, SPOM support in Alma Linux is gonna be by the end of the year, probably. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about the why, and this is, um, so in the United States in 2021, uh, the US president signed the uh, Executive Order 14028, uh, which basically says that if you, if you deal with a federal agency, you need to provide uh, SBOMs to, uh, well, to your customer, which is the, like the federal agency. And uh, so the requirements for S-bombs are defined in NTIA minim minimum elements. And uh, essentially it says that the S-bomb has to state, well, first of all, when, what, uh, who created the S-bomb itself, but also like uh, who created the software component that is described in the S-bomb and uh, what else? Oh yeah, then uh, the the software component itself, like the name, version, etc. And uh, but this uh, this S bomb also has to create uh, has to contain the dependencies that are um, so the software component, like the dependencies that it includes, that need to be stated in the S bomb. And uh, on the other side of the Atlantic, on the, in the European Union, there's the Cyber Resiliency Act, which has not been signed into into law yet, or it's not become a law yet. Well, I mean, technically both, both are not laws, but uh, so the Cyber Resiliency Act says that S-bombs uh, need, uh, need to be provided, but um, it's less clear about the contents of the S-bomb, but it still says that there need to be the dependencies and also it doesn't uh, specify which kind of dependencies, so it's a bit more, uh, bit more vague. Um, so anyway, so uh, when w the way we generate S bombs in Alma Linux is um, so there's uh, the, the backend side and the, the user side, and so during the during the build process, we have the sources and git .almalinux.org. and the build system will take the sources and well build uh, RPM packages because we're a RPM based Linux distribution, and um, w during the build process, metadata is generated. Um, well, like the well package name, like the ob the obvious uh, information that you would ex what you would expect, and this information is stored in, in a component called ImmuDB, which is, as the name uh, indicates, an immutable database. And um, so, actually, that means on the uh, we don't provide S bombs, as like uh, we don't provide S bombs, um, but we provide the data that goes into S bombs. And so when you generate an SBOM for uh, an Alma Linux package, what you do is on the user side, you use the SBOM generator and tell it which package you would like to have an SBOM for. And then this SBOM generator goes to the ImmuDB, queries the metadata for this package and creates the SBOM for you. And um, 
Yeah, so uh, right, this, this is generally how it works. And uh, so that the reason why I'm talking about this is because after my company joined Alma Linux Foundation, I was the one who implemented SPDX support uh, for this uh, SBOM generation. Right, um, so yeah, so that means the, oh, Oh, first, of, first of all, so if you, if you generate a, an SBOM on your site, so the, the steps are relatively simple. First, you would download the package, or I mean, if you know the hash, you don't need to download it. You can step, uh, skip uh, steps one and two. But generally, you would get the package that you want the SBOM for, calculate the hash of the package, and then run the uh, SBOM generator telling it like this is the hash of the package that I want to have the SBOM for. And then you can tell it uh, that you could tell it, for example, you want SPDX SBOM in JSON format, or you could have SPDX in XML or tech value or whatever. And you can also, if uh, you could, you could tell it that you want a um, Cyclone DX SBOM. Uh, but yeah, this is basically how it works. And uh, so the information that is included in, in these SBOMs, this is a set, so the SBOM refers, or it con uh, contains information about first the process that created the SBOM, so which is, is Alma SBOM, and the timestamp when the SBOM was uh, created, but then it's also like the information about the RPM and the, the, the SRPM, which is the source package uh, that was, um, used for uh, in the build process, but also you need uh, unique identifiers for the packages like a CPE and um, what's the other thing, uh, PURL, so package URL. And then there's information about the, the host that built the package and the build job that was uh, created, so like some maintainer creates a build job in the build system. And then you can use the SBOM also to, to trace back like who created the build job and like what's the, the build job, the build number, et cetera. Um, and yeah, of course, uh, most most importantly, you can also like see on, on the right side, there's git.almanux.org. And so the SBOM contains the URL of the source repository and the, the hash of the commit that was used to, during the build. So you can use the SBOM to trace a package back to the source that was that the package was created from. Um, so, yeah, but actually, in, uh, oh, it's first uh, so the NTIE, NTIE minimum elements, sorry. Uh, so these are the eight, so the eight, eight pieces of information that need to be in an SBOM according to the NTIE, NTIE minimum elements. And so there's like a name of the uh, author and supplier, which in both cases would be uh, uh, Alma Linux Foundation. And the component name, well, so the name of the package, the version would be, so in, in, uh, in RPMs, versions contain of three parts, the epoch, the version, and the release. All of that information goes into the version string, and then you have the, the hash, the unique identifiers, etc. cetera. Uh, the interesting thing here is the relationships, so we don't have any relationships in our SBOMs. And it's still NTIA minimum elements compliant, and that's because minimum elements say that these need to be the included dependencies. And in RPMs, usually, like one RPM package, if it depends on another package, it usually doesn't include it. it uh, so if you install package A, which depends on package B, the package manager will, manager will first install B and then A, but like package A does not include package B, and this is why we don't need to have this relationship in the SBOM, uh, at least from the NTIA perspective, which might not be very satisfying because as a distribution, we actually, uh, there's a lot more information in an RPM that could be used and that could be put into SBOMs. So especially, I mean, um, so on the build side, there's not just the, the build host and the repository, there's also uh, the build tools that were used, so like, like mock, et cetera. And then we have, um, so package belongs to a distribution, but it could also belong to a certain version of the distribution. This kind of information could be included in the SBOM. And um, yeah, then on the bottom left side, you have lots of other like change logs, files in, in the packages, the license, which is more or less interesting. But then you have also like the, um, so in SRPM, there's a package in uh, the patches that are included in the SRPM, which might be interesting for SBOM generation. And uh, what's most interesting is on the, on the right side, the dependencies. 
So um, like the dependencies that are not include dependencies, but uh, just when a package depends on other packages, like this information would be very interesting for an SBOM. And uh, yeah, so this could be like strong dependencies, like a package needs another package to be installed to run, but there is also weak dependencies, which is uh, like, uh, like it's, it suggests like a package A uh, suggests that you have package B installed because it might be useful, but it's not necessary to use A. Like these kinds of information could also be in there. But there was also um, dependencies can also be encoded as uh, capabilities, which basically says like this package provides a certain functionality, and then other packages can depend on this functionality, but it's it's not the package name itself. Like this functionality can be provided by different packages. Uh, so for example, well, I don't know what's a good example, but for example, like if you depend on grab, like you can have grab like the GNU implementation or the BSD implementation or whatever. So it could be different packages, but the capability would be grab. Um, yeah, anyway, so there's a lot of information that we as a distribution have that we could possibly put into SBOMs that we don't put into SBOMs right now. And so, um, I thought this is where we need to, to work on. So, yeah, uh, right. So there's, sorry, the graphics are not terribly good, but I don't want to like distract from the content. Um, so yeah, there's a low hanging fruit with basically like the changes that we need to, because you've seen how the, how the architecture uh, kind of works. So we have the, the SBOM generator that runs on the user side and changes to the SBOM generator itself are relatively simple. Um, it gets more complicated when we want to change the, the backend side because there might be changes to the database and so getting the changes here is more, uh, more time consuming and uh, more effort also because it affects other parts of the build system. Um, so for um, changing the SBOM generator, so on the client side, we can get the license information or like modularity streams, the capabilities, like all this information that we can read right from the RPM file. This could be added uh, relatively simply. And, and then there's stuff like the, the patches, which um, like here's a bit more complicated. So doing this on the build server side makes a lot more sense. And also like build tools, which is something that is, you cannot get this information from RPMs. So this would need a change on the build system side. And uh, then actually the, the dependencies are a bit more complicated for a reason that I'm going to, uh, going to explain right now. And um, so because I, I usually mostly work with SPDX files, so this is going to be a bit uh, SPDX heavy, but it's actually, uh, it works something like this in uh, Cycle and DX as well. Um, so here you have two SBOMs. It's, it's not very accurate, but uh, generally speaking, when you have SBOM that, uh, like two packages, and uh, because of the way we generate our SBOMs, we have one SBOM per package. Now, if one package depends on another package, it would need to refer to a package that is in another SBOM. And the way you do that in an SPDX file is that the, uh, the SBOM concludes, uh, includes a external document reference. And this external do document reference uh, says like this is URL of the SBOM that I'm including and then the other one is the, uh, the hash of the SBOM. So yeah, if, if you know the exact name of uh, the exact name and the exact version of the package you're including and uh, it's a uh, like a situation like this, it's, it's no, no problem. Uh, but it gets more interesting when we look at our, so in RPM packages, usually the dependency version is like, sometimes it's encoded in the package, sometimes it's not, mostly it's not. So we have uh, situations where we know, for example, we depend on grab, but we don't know which version. So the question is uh, when we build the SBOM, like what, what do we put into the external document reference, which SBOM do we refer to? So it could be different versions and depending on what the user uses in their environment, they would need different SBOM. So like we cannot de uh, deliver the same SBOM to two users in this case. And so, yeah, this is one of the problems. The other problem is when we uh, think about, so in Alma Linux or well, any Red Hat based Linux, there are cyclic dependencies. So like package A depends on B and B depends on A 
which uh, I mean, it might be direct. It's usually not. It's sometimes like the cycles are a lot larger. Like it's it's ten packages uh, that create a cycle, and then you have uh, cyclic dependencies. And um, so now, because in the S bomb to depend or to, to include another S bomb, sort of, you need to have the hash. And if the S bombs depend on each other, you need to have the. Well, you you cannot add the hash. If it was, well, let me let me start another way around. So you, you, cre you create the first S-bomb, and you need to add the hash of the other S-bomb, which you then generate, and you need to add the hash of the first S-bomb to the second S-bomb, and then you would need to regenerate the first S-bomb, and then the other. So it's, it's like, because it's, it's like, like um, it doesn't work with the hashes in the S-bomb. So um, yeah, because uh, so, so we needed to, to, to work around this. and. Um, yeah, so the, the solution to, to work around this is um, we actually leave the, the S-bombs the way that we provide them right now as is, or well, actually we could like pick some low-hanging fruit and add them to the, to the build S-bombs and introduce a new S-bomb type, as, uh, which is called a de deployment or deployed S-bomb. And this deployed S-bomb would, uh, first it would be one S-bomb for the entire system, so there are no external dependencies and because of this cyclic dependencies uh, can be in, the, in because all the packages are in the same SBOM you don't need the external package reps and so we can uh, like have all the dependencies that we want in our SBOM and uh, the other thing is that because we generate the so the SBOM represents exactly what's deployed in the system so we only have like these crisps, crisp dependencies where you can say it's exactly this version and exactly this release, etc. So yeah, this way, the yeah the problem is solved. And yeah, so the the benefit of doing it doing it in this way or well, having this uh, de deployment S bomb. Uh, it allows you to well, you, you can because the S bombs can contain uh, CPEs, so you can uh, like how, how how do you say it? Like you uh, use the S bomb data and, for example, overall scap data and like edit and like to to scan like use the two data uh, together and you use it to scan systems and you can use it to do like off offline scans of systems and. Um, yeah, so the, the other benefit that, that I see in, in this kind of approach is that uh, you could also use it to generate S-bombs, for example, of uh, Docker containers or well, Docker, Podman, whatever you use. And uh, yeah, this way you, can, you have an S-bomb that represents exactly what's in your Docker containers. And yeah, so I was planning to have a proof of concept done until today, which, uh, well, I didn't get it done. And um, because like uh, a lot of this dependency issue is something that, I've, uh, that I found out while I was uh, trying to add dependencies to the original build S bombs. So um, I cannot uh, demo the, the stuff that I was trying to show. Also, hold on a sec. Interesting. Yeah, I shouldn't have done package update before I came here. Um, so my virtual machine doesn't start, which is not helpful, but I can still show you. Um, so, hold on. Actually, I'm not, not sure if, if you're going to be able to read this. So, for example, this is uh, what the cu uh, current uh, current uh, build S bomb. Uh, in this case, it's for for a bash uh, bash package. This is what the, uh, uh, an S bomb currently looks like. Uh, I was going to show the the entire process of generating it, but uh, yeah, sorry, my, my virtual machine doesn't start. Um, so yeah, in, in the beginning, I have like a, who created the S bomb, which is like a, well, on the Linux Foundation, and then the tools that were used to generate the S bomb itself. And like a license of the S bomb, and then you have a 
like a package and a version of the SPDX document and the document namespace. And then here you see like in, in the packages section, there's uh, SPDX rev zero, which is, uh, so I'm not sure if, if can, can you read that in the back of the room? Nobody's complaining. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a bit small. Um, is it like, let's see, huge is invisible? <laughs> oh, oh, maybe, yeah. I guess that's a bit better. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, like this SPDX ref refers to the package that's in the SBOM, and then you have annotations. So epoch version release. Like, uh, oh, sorry. Like these three are the version of the package, which is like epoch zero, version 5.18, and then release is uh, six point EL Q under bar one. And yeah, architecture, uh, source RPM. Well, actually, the most interesting stuff is probably further down. Uh, CPE, PURL. No, but actually, nope. Where was it? Oh, so this is the name of the branch that the package was built from. And a bit further up here, you have the this the hash of the of the Git source or the, the commit in the source repository. And a bit higher up is the well, this is the URL of the uh, of the source repository. So. Yeah, this is to show that like you can use SBOMs to well figure out which exact source was used to build a certain package. And yeah, so like this does not include uh, dependencies yet, but uh, so I'm working on this and I'm hoping to have this done by uh, the end of the year. And yeah, so yeah, so if you found any of this interesting, so you can get in touch with us on, uh, well actually the, the source code for this is on GitHub, so github.com slash almalinux slash alma hyphen sbomb is where the source is located. Uh, there's the Alma Linux chat, where if, you, if you're interested in sbombs and you want to um, like get, get in touch with us and like influence the way uh, sbomb support and Alma Linux uh, develops in the future, just join the chat and talk to us. And then there's also like connect on LinkedIn. Yep. And that is it. It's a bit shorter than I expected. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. Okay. Questions? Yeah, okay. So, as I have a... That, that's fine. I'll, I'll say if you can repeat it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the, one of the reasons why they have cyclic dependencies and things like yes. this, why you put that into the dependency resolution process is because maybe somebody already has a version of a particular package installed, and so they don't want everything to be exactly the same version of exactly the same like you want uh, the ability if they have a slightly older or slightly different version of one of the packages with the cyclic dependence to work with the others, right? Um, and so uh, one thing that I'm like finding kind of like a little bit of cognitive mismatch here is on um, when you're thinking about SBOMs in terms of a specific package, um, I think the reason why that self-referential problem is hard is uh, because intentionally the package manager is trying like, to have latitude in what it can choose to fulfill a specific dependency, like which version of a package it can use. And so I think your deployment thing solves that problem in a nice way, but yep. um, 
what are your thoughts about how dependency resolution as it just feeds into SBOM creation process? Is it important to have those hashes in there, or should there be more flexibility? So your question is what my thoughts are about uh, like the, the depend how, how dependencies should be added to build SBOMs? Do I so understand yeah, that right? Let's say you just have defined a, a package that you're going to distribute, and you want to bring an SBOM with that package. Yes. So rather than defining the dependencies as specific pin versions of every single package, usually that isn't done, or at least it's not usually done in a cyclic yeah. way. Otherwise, you just bundle all that stuff together. Yes. Right? Um, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if I bundle everything together, then I would have the situation where it, it's actually in, in the package. I know what I'm providing, so it's very easy to create an SBOM. So the, the issue that we're having is actually that because we don't know which version of a package the user will be installing, so we cannot generate any reasonable, meaningful SBOM in, uh, on our side. And we would have to, like the, the user needs to create, well, this deployed SBOM on their side and uh, so for the build SBOM I don't see a, a, a way that we could we could provide meaning, meaningful SBOM because we just don't know which version of a package is going to be installed. I mean we can make guesses and uh, yeah but at the end of the day it's it's up to the user what, what they're going to install. Right, it's the dependency yeah. you want to yes. capture not the specific yes. version in that case but when the installation happens I think grabbing all the Yeah, I mean, of course, you could also add all possible, like, because we know which packages we have, so we could theoretically add all of them, but uh, the, no, the, the you question... Can't, you don't know the ones that will exist in the future that might meet that dependency. At the time yeah. you generate the SBOM, a new package could come out tomorrow, a new version that would still yeah. match the dependency list for that package you just generated. Well, that, that is true, but the, the SBOM create, uh, contains timestamps, so you could, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so I think so. The way I understand the SPDX uh, standard is that there are no uh, wildcard dependencies, so, and this makes it complicated to correctly like uh, model this with a with a build S bomb. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Is this only for Fedora? Uh, this is for Alma Linux, and because it uses metadata during from our build system, and this this so this only works for packages on Alma Linux. I see. Yeah. So not around, so not all the RPM. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I uh, I think I was supposed to to uh, repeat the question. So the question was if uh, this is only for Alma Linux uh, or other distributions, and yeah. So. Um, only for Alma Linux. Yeah, this is only for Alma Linux. Um, if you, so because we, uh, so this, this depends on our build system, and so if you ported the, the part of our build system that generates the metadata and puts it into MUDB, if you added that part to the Fedora build system, then you would, would be able to use it, yeah. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Still got time left. <laughs> okay, in the back of the room. Um, what are your thoughts on the oh. test? Uh, okay. Um, what are your thoughts on the author of the S bomb being the person who runs the generator, not just Alma Linux, because that's where the data comes from? That's an excellent question. And I, I actually, before I created the presentation, I thought the same thing. It's actually because we're um, right, we're just providing the generator. We're not providing the SBOM. Well, we provide the metadata that goes into the SBOM. So my thought was probably because the user is using our data to generate an SBOM. So, like, from the build of the package to the generation of the SBOM, there is actually no way the user could modify the SBOM unless they modified the SBOM generator, of course. So. You could argue that the user, if they generate an SBOM, it's still sort of generated by us because we control the generation process. 
and then the user, if they customize it, they would have to change the the, the name uh, of the author in the S bomb. But I think this is a discussion that we still need to have in on our side to because yeah, I think there's a there's a good argument to be made that this should be the the name of the person actually running the uh, S bomb generator. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>